they have no control over it, they use the angel interception system to basically ensnare it in all these wires, the way they uh, capture Gulliver and Gulliver's travels. Oh my god. Alright, this is going to be kind of weird because all my stuff for this is... I'm sorry guys. For some reason my notes pane is not working, so I can't look at my notes effectively, but I will try anyway. Alright, one of the English titles in the show is Ambivalence, uh, which is the state of having simultaneous conflicting feelings toward a person or thing. More specifically for psychoanalysis, it refers to an underlying emotional attitude in which the coexisting contradictory impulses derived from a common source and are thus held to be interdependent. In the episode, this term is referring to Shinji's thoughts about fighting Evangelion Unit 3. The two conflicting emotions are his, du his duty to nerve to kill the angel and his reluctance of killing an Eva with a human pilot inside. Destrudo. Destrudo is basically like the opposite of libido. It's the death impulse. It shows up in the series, you can't really read it, but this graph kind of shows libido and Destrudo. And then they mention Destrudo again at the end of Evangelion, which sort of having a metric for how much Shinji wants everybody to die. And then when that's kind of maxed out, the anti-AT field spreads out and everybody turns into orange goo. Ouch. I don't really need to tell you anything about depression. <laughs> Fairly obvious. But um, aside from being one of the sort of core things in Evangelion, depression is also the title of a track from the third uh, soundtrack. Hedgehog's Dilemma is both a concept from the show as well as a title of an episode from the first soundtrack. And uh, I think it's fairly well explained in the show. Infantile dependence uh, is the subjugating of a person to their parental figures, usually his or her mother. This usually occurs during the early states of life when a child is totally dependent on their parents. And this is fairly obvious because the Pilots are kind of dependent on their evils, and their evils are their parents, specifically their mothers. Introjection is a title of the episode as well as a title for the soundtrack that is also used in that episode. Is the incorporation of characteristics of a person or object into one's own psyche unconsciously. According to Freud, the ego and the superego are constructed by interjecting external behavior into the subject's own persona. This can be a defense mechanism where one takes on attributes of a strong other person who is able to cope with the current threat. In the episode, Ibn 1, Yui incorporates Shinji, similar to interjection except in a physical sense. Libido is basically the, the life drive, the, just the drive and desire to create life, also known as heroes. As I said before, it shows up on one of the graphs in the show. Oral stage is the name of an episode. The oral stage is the first stage of Freud's psychosexual stages about child development. An infant derives pleasure from having things in their mouth at this stage. This is that episode where Shinji society gave you unit one. And one of the things that they show is breastfeeding in the show. And it's also a double entendre talking about sort of this monologuing that takes place. Pleasure Principle is the name of one of the tracks. It simply states that people seek pleasure and avoid pain. According to Freud, the part of the psyche that acts according to this principle is the id. 
This is the case for some of the characters in the show. I think mostly Mosca. She's searching for people to praise her, to give her value and meaning to her existence, which is why she just goes crazy when she can't do it. Separation anxiety is the psychological condition where people feel extremely anxious with being away from home or people they're emotionally attached to. Separation anxiety can become a disorder depending on the severity of it. Who suffers from the worst case of separation anxiety ever? Not Shinji. Asuka. She practically goes catatonic. The original title of episode 16 translates to Sickness Unto Death. Um, it's kind of a really long, hard to explain one, but it's, uh, it's a book by a Danish philosopher, and it basically boils down to mental death or despair. And it has a lot of underpinnings to the plot because of Shinji and the Eva. This is kind of where Shinji kind of starts to figure things out and starts to understand and kind of take some confidence in himself. So he kind of... Like, there's these three contacts in the show that take place. Shinji makes contact with Angel in episode 16. Asuka makes a contact with Angel in episode 22. And then Rei makes a contact with Angel in episode 23. All three characters basically go into a similar scenario. Asuka is the only one that doesn't get bettered by it. The other two characters understand their role in, in, in the world and, it, that they're, and their egos and everything. Thanatos is the title of the track in the soundtrack. And it's basically the death drive. It's an urge inherent to all organic life to restore an earlier state of things. And basically, it boils down to, in the end of the everybody dies. Right. Some visual references that I, that I pulled. The left image is, um, if you've ever been to the Dynax corporate website, Every week they change the welcome image on their website to uh, something derivative of their show. This is one of the ones for Evangelion, one of the older ones. And it uses this, and then they use it, the same composition again later for the renewal project. Fairly obvious. But it also shows up kind of in a show as well. It makes a lot more sense. You know, we kind of think about, oh, Ian and one is Shinji, Ian and zero is Ray, and then the one on the right is very similar to this. But it's pulling a very uh, distinct reference from classical art. This is a piano by Michelangelo, and it is the uh, Virgin Mary cradling Jesus' body after he's been taken down off the cross. Variants of this image exist all over the place in this period of art, both in sculpture and in painting. And being a religious image, naturally, this shows up in the show and in sort of other artwork related to the show. Other sculptures appear as well, like this one. This is one of the interior uh, illustrations from the manga. It depicts Kaoru uh, with the cat sitting on this sculpture. It's by Antonio Pinova. It's called Amori S. Saishi. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's up there so you can read it. Um, and it's, it's Cupid and this uh, other figure that I can't remember called Saishi. I, 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 it's been a long time since I read into this. I should, have, I should double check to make sure. But, Saiki. There's another uh, a bit of architecture that I thought was kind of interesting in, in this show. Um, there's a scene where Sada's talking to Hugo on this bridge. It's a very interesting looking bridge that exists in real life. It also shows up in the Yelling. 
And let me check my notes. The actual title and what it. It's the uh, Alan Milo Bridge. Uh, it's a structure in Seville, Andalusia, which is in Spain. And what this bridge uh, represents is soaring ambition. Um, I thought that was very interesting that this, that that would be something that would be down in the geofront. You know, the geofront is probably, within the world of Evangelion, it's one of the most ambitious efforts that they made this entire un humongous underground uh, uh, complex. I think the only thing more complicated than that would probably be doing something like that, but on the moon. References. You're not going to be able to see it very well in this projection, but one of the things that's on these boxes, sort of bottom right, is the VF-111, Sundowners. Sundowners is another uh, naval reference. I don't know a lot, a lot about this uh, this uh, air, it's, it's, it's like a, it's a naval, they have, you know, like a Navy, Air Force kind of, uh, there's two different units that, are, that use this name, and I don't really know what their kind of claim to fame was, but they're, they're really well known. But below that box is another one that you might be familiar with. NC-1701D. Does that ring a bell for anybody? Yes. <laughs> So they managed to get a little reference in their Star Trek. Here's a random Japanese trekking. I love the upside down bag, the, the upside down communicator. But um, just just to uh, to cater to both sides of the fandom, in the manga there's a uh, another kind of similar thing down here in this uh, file for Toji. Midi Oh so God. apparently the, uh, the pilots in Evangelion have a uh, Victorian count. It's off the scale. It's off the scale. It's like, how many digits is that? One, two, three, three, three. It's like 780 billion or something. Ouch. Uh, R20 shows up on this uh, lift, this elevator. Anybody know what R20 is? Good. You guys are learning something new today. R20 is a failed project by Dynax. Oh, After they made the Wings of Onionis, Ryuki Yamaga sat down and started working on another project called Route 20. Or actually, because he worked on two projects. One was, all, one was also called Aoki Uru, which apparently got reworked and they're actually going to finally make. But this one is called Route 20. And it was kind of a cyberpunk kind of thing, sort of like Akira, kind of, uh, but with robots. And it really didn't get very far. They, uh, they put down a promotion, they put together a promotional video of some uh, concept work, some animation that they did. Didn't get picked up. They didn't get a, uh, a, a they didn't get any money to fund this project, which is not surprising coming out of the back of the Royal Space Force, which was a financial flop. Um, I thought I had another illustration here. Oh, but um, if you really like Gynax, uh, search for Route 20 on Ava Monkey. I have all the stuff for Route 20 available, even the manga that was uh, scan label. I love it. So, some rather random stuff that I included in this is wrong button. This is, probably seems fairly intuitive, but every hand weapon in Evangelion is a real, actual thing that exists in the real world. Every gun in Evangelion is a real gun. They took references from everywhere for, for things. They didn't design any of their own guns. And the point where we ask, okay, so what? In the dub, one of the things they say it for uh, when um, Aoba hands Ibuki uh, this pistol, or this kind of pistol, he says safety's off. This gun does not have a safety. Oh. 
that's a really minor, doesn't really change the meaning of the show, but that's like, I'm not going to hate on dubs, but I'm going to say real quick, if you watch the show in its original subtitle format, you're going to pick up on a lot of little differences. Sometimes it's little details like this gun doesn't actually have a safety to the entire tone of the scene has been changed because they took it from something totally serious to something slapstick. So, if you've never watched the show in its original audio, in its original language format, please, you'll pick up and you'll learn a lot from watching it. I speak from experience. It took me forever to actually watch the show in Japanese and I, I've never gone back. It's quite different. I know what you're doing. No Tiffany Grant. I like this kind of, it's like a Russian pistol. It's very exotic for weeks ago. <laughs> even, these, even these guns are in like, like one frame of animation. There's a real gun that exists in real life. Uh, I didn't get time to add any of them. Those really futuristic looking rifles that don't have like barrels at the end of it, that the uh, JSSDF used in the end of it, in the alien, is uh, an Israeli uh, caseless uh, rifle. It doesn't have any casings for its, for its, for its, for its uh, ammunition. And uh, one last thing that I'll, I'll show you, it's kind of blow your mind. In the end of Evangelion, when um, the Lance merges with Unit 1 and becomes the Tree of Life and goes down into Lilith slash Ray's forehead, there's like a minute long sequence of images. Single frames, all distorted, colored oddly, inverted, and most of them are animation. Sometimes there's other things that are overlaid on them, but mostly just shots from the original show that have been done weird things to. Except for four frames of animation. It's like 1,800 frames, and hidden among those is four frames of merchandise. Asado, <laughs> Hikari, Asuka, and Ray. This is why I love this show. I just found out about this this summer. Somebody actually sat down and framed through all 1,200, 1,800 frames of this one minute of 30 frames per second. 60 times 30 times one, whatever. It's like a ton, it's a lot of frames. They framed through the entire thing and found these images. Blew my mind. Wow. This show was made to be put under a microscope. I could just keep adding more. Like, this is like 130 slides. I can add more and more to this thing and not get everything in that I would like to get into. It. But that's all I have time for. So thank you for coming. If you're looking for cool Ava stuff on the internet, that's where you want to go. Ava Geeks more like a community. Hard news, resources, information, and forums. Ava Monkey, which is my site, which is like a sister site, is mostly a blog which has a lot of the cool kind of random stuff of fandom that I find. And uh, yeah, check them out. Thanks for coming. Thank you.